بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد continuing on in our study of aqidah wasatiyah by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala we've reached the end of the treatise very close very down to the last few uh, durus with regards to this beautiful treatise which explains the aqid of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah Shaykh al-Islam mentioning some of the other detailed aspects of the creed of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah Qala Shaykh al-Islam wa min asul Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah salamatu qulubihim wa alsinatihim لأصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كما وصفهم الله به في قوله تعالى والذين جاءوا من بعدهم يقولون ربنا ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم among the principles of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah is to have peace and pure hearts with regard and a tongue regarding the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And something I want to point out there in that statement of Shaykh Al Islam, he said, among the principles of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah lie the attitude of peace, uh, tranquility, and purity of the heart and tongue. Towards the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Ta'ala Majma'in Right there Shaykh Al-Islam even mentioned And that's part of Iman And he just mentioned two things which refer to The pillars of Iman Not all the pillars of Iman But he just mentioned what? He just mentioned the having a, a, a clean heart And that's a part of Iman And a clean tongue which is a part of Iman What we say with our tongue And of course Min Baba Ola also Included in that is, of course, having iman on the tongue. I mean, iman on the limbs. Meaning that, of course, you would not go try to dig up the graves of the of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi uh, of the uh, companions of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu taala majmain, or do anything to desecrate uh, them any physical way, which physically would be impossible now. But at least we know that as far as the other way. So this is from iman, and this is what he said. He said this is from the foundations This is from amongst the principles of Ahl Sunnah Is that they are They have a, a peaceful heart Tranquil hearts with regarding the, the companions They're the salaf of this ummah They're the ones who we follow uh, With the Prophet wasallam, His example Their ijma Their creed Their minhaj and dawah Illallah subhanahu wa ta'ala That is what Ahl Sunnah holds fast to. That is the creed, that is the minhaj, that the methodology of the salaf of this ummah. Radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'een. And it was the sahaba to rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'een. And we love them. Radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'een. Walau kari al-kafirun. Even if the kafirs hate it. Walau kari al-mushrikun. Even if the mushrikun, the pagans hate it. Walau kari ahla zandaka. Even if the ahla zandaka, the people of heresy, hate it. Walau kari al-rafidah. And even if the Rafida, the Shia, those wicked, fasic, evil, shayateen, those devils in the, in, the, in the body of men, that they hate the, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, and we're going to keep making radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and making dua for them and making dua against you, that you leave your tongues and your hearts Keep them free from the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een Because that is nothing but wickedness and zandaka And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said La tasubbu ashabi Fuhu alladhi nafsi bi yadi Lo anna ahadakum anfaqa mithla uhadin Zahaban Ma balaga mudda ahadikum ahadihim Wala nasif Wala nasif the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Do not abuse my companions, radiyallahu taala anhu For if any one of you spent gold equal to uhud, 
in Allah's cause, it would not be equal to a mud, two-third of a kilogram, or even half a mud spent by one of them. And this was in Bukhari. That shows you the status of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ahl Sunnah they accept all the 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 grades of the companions that have been described about them in the Quran and the Hadith and by consensus they give superiority to those who spent and fought for the sake of Allah before the victory. That is the truce of Hudaybiyah over those who spent and fought after that. They consider the Muhajireen, those who migrated from Mecca to Medina, to be superior to Al Ansar, the helpers of Al Medina who supported the Muhajireen. They also have faith in what Allah has said about the 313 per persons on the occasion of the Battle of Badr and that they are free to do what they like, their sins are pardoned, Ruahu Bukhari. And none of those who gave their pledge to the Prophet Sallallahu under the tree will get into the hellfire. As the Prophet Sallallahu has said, Allah is doubtlessly pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. So this is the state and status of those people who fought for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who were the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. And they were more than 1,400 about whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bore witness that they would be admitted to the paradise. And this was in Muslim. Ahl sunnah also bear witness the admission to paradise for them as such as the... Uh, Ashara Mubashirin, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu who have been given glad tidings of paradise in this world by the Prophet sallallahu and the Sahaba like Thabit bin Qais, bin Shamas, and other than them. Ahl Sunnah, they affirm the frequent traditions which have come down about Amir Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In other words, they regard Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an as the best person after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then comes Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Then they give the third position to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the fourth to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu as is proved by the narrations. And the Sahaba had unanimously agreed at the time of offering the bay'ah the oath of loyalty to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Although some of Ahl Sunnah had a, a small difference regarding Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhum and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhuma as to who is superior between the two. But they also are unanimous about Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma as to who among Uthman and Ali is superior, some have given priority to Uthman and have then kept quiet and have given the fourth place to Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. Some have given priority to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and some have kept silent. But in the case of Ahl Sunnah, it is established that Uthman <coughs> radiallahu ta'ala anhu has priority over Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Although, according to the majority of Ahl Sunnah, the problem regarding priority to Uthman over Ali is not such that opposition to it may be called misguidance. This will, of course, be considered misguidance on the question of the Khilafah. The Ahl Sunnah believe that Abu Bakr is the Khalifa after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then Umar, then Uthman, then Ali Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhum Ajma'een Whoever objects against any one of these uh, regarding this order of the Khilafah, he will be regarded as more misguided than a domestic donkey. And this is the word of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, meaning that do not differ with regards to the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala and prefer some over others outside of the rank and status that has already been mentioned in the ahadith of the Prophet وسلم, and first and foremost in the Quran, the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech, the divine speech of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, tabarak wa ta'ala. Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, they love the members of the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is also a part of the creed. Shaykh al-Islam said, Rahimullah Ta'ala. He said, Ahl Sunnah love the members of the household of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding regard them as friends and protect the will 
meaning Oliya, and protect the will of the Prophet ﷺ about them, which he had stated on the day of Ghadr il uh, Ghadr Ikhum. I remind you of a law about my Ahl Bayt, my household. This is uh, collected in uh, Muslim. And the Prophet ﷺ said to his uncle Abbas when it was complained that some people of Quraysh are oppressing Bani Hashim. The Prophet ﷺ said, I swear by the one who holds my soul in his hand that these people cannot be believers unless they love you and my relatives. So Ahl Sunnah loves the relatives of the Prophet ﷺ. And Ahl Sunnah loves the Sahaba to Rasulullah. The Prophet also said, Allah chose Bani Ismail, and from Bani Ismail he chose Bani Kanana, and from Bani Kanana he chose the Quraysh, and from Quraysh he chose Bani Hashim, and he chose me from Bani Hashim, Ruahu Muslim. Ahl Sunnah people Jama'ah regard the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu with reverence on the ground that they were like the mothers of the believers. They have a faith that these will be the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu in the hereafter. Also particularly uh, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha who is the mother of the most of most of the children of the Prophet Sallallahu and was the first among the faithful ones. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhum or hunna ajma'in she cooperated with him in his work and she enjoyed a high status due to him. Sadiqa bin Sadiq, radiallahu ta'ala anha, uh, about whom the Prophet sallallahu said, this is about Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, Aisha has superiority over all other women in the same way as Farid has superiority over all other foods. And this is narrated in Bukhari. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah express their disassociation from the way of the Rafida, as we mentioned, for they keep malice amongst the Sahaba. They hate the Sahaba. They curse the Sahaba. They make takfir of some of the Sahaba. The Rafida, they are an extremist sect of the Shia, who gave up Zayd bin Ali bin Hussein when he showed love to Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Uh, they disregarded him in Kufa in the way that they have done with his grandfather Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, be pleased with all the uh, all the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. Also Ahl Sunnah they express they, they free themselves from the Rafidah because of their because they hate the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and also the ways of the Nawasib. The Nawasib they are the people who have enmity with Ahl Bayt. You know, they hate the, the family of the Prophet ﷺ, and they slander them and consider them to be disbelievers. They are the opponents of the Rafida, and all of them are on the creed of Sandaqa wa heresy wa iyadhan billah min dhalika. The Nawasib, they inflict pain or they curse Ahl Bayt by their words and their actions and keep themselves uninvolved in the differences that arose amongst the Sahaba. Ahl Sunnah believe that the narratives reported about the shortcomings of the Sahaba are either false or have been exaggerated or reduced or perverted. The right stand in this connection is that they, the Sahaba, are excused. Either they grasped the correct position by ijtihad or they committed a mistake. And this is in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet wasallam that if a person makes it, that if a mujtahid, a person who has the right, they have knowledge in ilm, will fiqh fi deen. and that they make a mistake then they are rewarded with one reward and if they get it correct then they receive two rewards this is the case for the mujtahid not for the person who's ignorant and so this is of course min baba ola the the a'lam nas fi ummah the most pious and the most knowledgeable people in this ummah the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the companions of radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in and so this is why they are forgiven and they are excused if they made mistakes in fiqh in their ijtihad because of their difference one was more correct in an opinion than the other not everyone can be right not everyone can be correct in their opinion not every matter is is uh, a matter that's so broad that you can just ev everything is correct. So the companions of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in they are excused for any mistakes in ijtihad they might have committed. Along with this Ahl Sunnah do not believe that every sahabi is innocent of the minor or major sins, but rather it is possible in general that they commit a sin. 
but they have already allowed to Majmain, but they have some such superiorities and virtuous deeds to their credit, which cause the pardon of the errors committed by them. Even those errors of theirs will be pardoned, which will not be pardoned if committed by the people of the latter period. The reason is that they have to their credit such virtues to compensate for their errors, which the people who came later do not have. The Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, they're the best of this ummah, the best of this nation. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good, to forgive our evil, and bless us to have al-nafi, ruskan tayyibu, amil al-mutaqabin, and bless us with ikhlas, with the bad ala sunnah, and bless us to meet the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, and jannah to firdaus, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.